Okay, hello. Uh, today we'll be doing the horrific vision of Ogrimar with my hunter. I'm gonna buy a vessel here. I'm gonna show you real quick what have I unlocked in the research archive. Uh, this is pretty much it. I have everything until the end, which includes Gift of the Titans. And uh, three out of three this, and one out of three this. Everything else you know, is unlocked except these two. But that it really doesn't matter that much since I'm uh, I got my cloak to level 15, so all that is left now is to simply um, upgrade the cloak with malefic cores for more corruption resistance. So let's move on. Also, quick notification of the essences: vision of perfection, but the dying, the unbound force, and the crucible of flame. Just like last time when I was doing Stormwind. Either way, I will show you a clear path how to do Ogrimar quickly and efficiently, so it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Um, I'm gonna use uh, a food. I don't have a flask, but I'll still use the food just in case. You can also use kebabs. Those are like special types of food that restore sanity. If you ever get a hold of one of those. You can use it to restore 100 sanity when you eat it in um, in a vision. So if you ever ha find yourself in a situation that you need sanity, you just use a kebab. Kebabs are really good. Either way, let's start this thing. Orgrimmar, pretty straightforward. Uh, in the very beginning, I'm just going to pick up as much as possible mobs and then eat them down. As you're going to see right now. Alright, we're in. Okay, we pick up all of these here and here, and then I pick up these two over here. As you as you know, these mobs are similar to the ones from Stormwind, the ones these two that I I pulled. So you wanna burst them down as fast as you can with um, with all the cooldowns available. So I'm gonna check for the potion here. There's a potion on the floor, it's purple. So if, if you see the purple potion at the moment, that means that the poison from the potions is purple. Every po purple potion is a poison and you should not be drinking it. The, the potion changes every single time when you do a new vision. So it's always good to check in that little hut what's going on and if it's safe to drink that certain potion or not. Either way, the first zone I'm going to do is going to be a Garona zone over here on the right side. It should be quite easy. Just got to kill some appendages. The, w the worst part about this zone is that you have scorched feet and that's just annoying as hell. So there's nothing you can do about it. Alright. Popping cooldowns, popping trinkets. Trying to get out of that circle. When there's a circle, just uh, try to avoid it. And when he's doing that annihilation thingy on top of you, uh, try to move towards him so you get closer and closer as you can. Anyway, this was pretty straightforward, easy boss. Let's move on. Here you have to kill some adds and open most of the doors on the huts that way we can explore and see and progress through this zone so you just click on these okay there's a potion there's a red one you can drink the red one if I want okay I don't know what it gives me it gives me some things a buff Sluggish potion. Heal this potion heals me. Okay. Just gotta quickly kill these mobs. Okay. Check the tailoring shop and orphanage for survival. You want to interrupt the uh, dominators as much as you can if they ever cast that one special spell that tries to stun you. It's always good to interrupt them or stun them or whatever you can do. Anything works. 
there's gonna be a mob inside here which you have to kill. It's called Snank. There he is, Snank. He's quite easy. He doesn't have any special abilities or anything, anything in particular that could slow you down or something. Okay, there's a chest here. We're gonna loot that. I'm gonna get these. And this one, that's the last one, and now we'll deal with the boss. So with this boss, when he's trying to shoot bolts at you, you hide behind this tree stump as fast as you can. Then you try to break the shield as well as fast as you can so he doesn't hit you and reduces your sanity. I'll show you how this goes. If he, if he does the bolts, I'll hide. If he doesn't, I'll just kill him. Okay, there we go. Void Torrent, that's the bolts. What you want to do is just hide behind this tree so they all miss you. And then you just kill him. There you go, that's about it. That's the entire boss fight. This is a lot harder on 5 masks, but on, on, on 0 masks it's quite easy so it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, next zone is the law zone. This is the nasty one, which you have to be careful. There's the first mini boss, Misha. There's nothing really special too much about this boss. Just uh, try to get her down as fast as you can. If there's an AoE in, a, in her close range, you just move away from that. She didn't do it right now because I, I kill her so fast. Here you want to take the path to the right or left. Either, either way is fine, so it's no, not a problem. Try to heal your pet whenever you can. Always helps. Alright, that was quite okay. There's another chest here. I'm gonna loot that. And here you can jump from across this hill to the other side of the lake. Kill some ads here and then go for the mini boss straight away. That that thing in front of us is a mini boss. He's gonna put some green stuff on the floor, so you just wanna avoid it as fast as you can. And that's about it. There's nothing much about that boss. I'm gonna kill it too fast probably. There we go, that's the green stuff. You just avoid it and you kill the mini boss. There we go. You move on to the next boss up there. You wanna stand behind this guy so he knocks you or your pet to the direction of of going upwards instead of going down so you don't get knocked somewhere where you don't want to get knocked let's say out of the area then you lose some sanity and it's not good so you know, always have to be careful on that mob so Rexer is a pretty nasty boss here you can either burst down the boss if you have enough DPS which I'm gonna do probably or you can kill his pigs one by one. There we go, that's the first pig. I'm gonna ignore the pigs completely and I'm just gonna go for the boss as fast as I can. There we go, the boss is dead. On fire mask, this should not be doable. This is totally not doable on fire masks because the pigs do so much sanity damage that you lose it pretty fast and then you get screwed. So the tactics for him will be like g get him to the certain percent of the health until he spawns a pig then kill that pig and then kill the next one next one next one until all the pigs are dead and then finish off the rexer himself and that's about it right those were the first two zones i'm gonna go to the second two which are on the left side of ogrimmar right over here gotta clear this trash here so i can move on My pets are not here, sadly. That's bad. I'll have to resummon them because I took the. Um, because I took the quick, quick way that quick way back. Okay, I'm gonna dismiss. You don't have a pet. Okay. I guess I just have to call it. Kill some ads here. 
and then it's time for the mini boss. For this mini boss, you don't want to stand in front of him, and if you have to, just make sure to avoid his charge. That surging phase, that's a charge. And then he does the decimator, where he tries to shoot you with a bolt, which goes backwards to him. So what you want to do is avoid that bolt and that charge of him, and then you just kill him. That's about it. Did I DC? I think I DC'd. Okay, that, that's no problem. That's okay. I can log in really fast and resume this as soon as I DC though. Oh, I, I didn't DC. I actually didn't kill that mob over there. Never mind. Now I can go in probably. Why, why, why can I not go in? What's happening? Okay, there we go. Now I can go in. This was a little bit weird. Never happens. It's okay. We're back on the track. Here, the goal is to free the prisoners or, to like, not the prisoners, the totems. Destroy the totems which lead to the final boss. This is a very nasty area because when you have scorched feet it tends to knock you down from the um, from the wooden path which kinda sucks but oh well. Go, just kill this. Oh, I haven't clicked on that totem. See, that's what the scorch feet does. It knocks you off the path to the water, which is horrible. Now I just pulled them off for no reason. Well, I guess we can kill him because there's a chest here I can loot. Okay, looting the chest. More mementos. There's another chest here, which I'm gonna pick. That's two out of two. Kill the ads here. Click on the totem. And then there's the last totem right over here on this pack of the mobs. There are two nasty mobs after this, which have to be dealt with carefully. These two guys. Just try to avoid any attacks they do, or anything similar to that. Yeah, and now is the boss time. On this boss, you want to avoid the waves that try to go at you. And when he does the hopelessness, as he's doing right now, you want to move to that little shiny circle on the floor so you get out of that sort of uh, phase. Okay, we've done everything here. That was the... Corrupted zone, and now we go to the last lost zone to be done. It's a pretty easy one. Uh, it's a lot easier than the one from Rexter, in my opinion. There are there are three mini bosses here you have to deal with. This first mob is okay in the beginning, no problem with that. Couple of mobs down here. Uh, this week's madness is leading foot, meaning that when I attack something, and if I try to move, it's gonna slow me down periodically, stacking up more and more. So I have to be careful how much do I move if I wanna move around. 
this was a lot worse before the previous patch because it could stack up to like 15 or 20 or something like that now it only stacks up to 10 so it's a lot easier now than before but either way you have to, you always have to be careful with leading foot see I have to have to stop for a little bit so I can move again okay this is gonna be the first mini boss here after this trash just gotta clear it real quick almost there okay that's the boss uh, on this one when he tries to jump on top of you you just move away and everything else is this howling in pain is useless so it doesn't do anything there's also a mailbox here you can open I'm gonna open one just for no reason maybe I get a mail muncher even though I don't I have it already yeah it's just something that I don't need okay we've killed that now what we're gonna do is clear this section on the right make sure to interrupt the touch that they try to do on top of you these are also fine to kill there's a chest on the right which I'm gonna loot there we go there's another chest on the left on this next boss uh, you want to move preemptively meaning moving before he even does the ability because when he does the ability will try to trigger in less than a second so you already have to be moving there we go for example I, I had to be moving to move out of that really quick even uh, in this one too as well just move preemptively when you see him casting that's the safest way okay now we gotta do the last boss of this zone it's quite easy you want to stay in the close melee range of him because when he does uh, default ground you want to move away because he tries to do that as you can see also this on the floor also you want to stand inside of these circle because they they move out after a while in a different direction or default ground you avoid that there we go and that's the whole law zone so that's two law zones and two corrupted zones. That's the full run that I've just done. Now only remains is Troll. So we're gonna move all the way back to Troll in his hull. We're gonna try to snook him down as fast as we can. As you can see, I have not used a single orb in this run because I'm level cloak 15 and because I do it so fast without too much worries then I don't have to use it. I have this last perk, Gift of the Titans, which reduces my sanity damage taken by a lot. Here you want to burst down the pigs first as fast as you can, so I'm gonna pop my cooldowns and kill the pigs. And then you wanna watch for the foul ground when Troll does it, so you move away like that. Because he gets the abilities of every single boss that there was before. Here you wanna stand in the middle because there is stuff on the floor, they follow ground again, then you want to move out because there is stuff in the middle. Then you try to break this shield. If you can break it, good. If not, it shouldn't be that much of a problem. But um, if you're not, it's not big of a deal. It's okay. More to follow ground, you move out of that. Okay, now it's hopelessness, so you, we find on the little light circle on the ground, we move into that. There we go. Now we get out of it again, more to follow ground. Kill this get out of the eye get on the other side and kill the boss there we go and that's pretty much the entire round of Ogrimmar the full round with a hunter just a note I'm 472 right now since I got some sweet loot um, gonna loot all the stuff and then I'm gonna show you one more thing that you asked me in one of the emails about corruption and it's a good 
good week to show you exactly what I was trying to say. Lefic core. I can't put this here. Put it on the cloak. There we go. It's 53 now. Excellent. Okay. So, quick corruption recap. You do not want to have more than 39 corruption. At the moment, I only have 18, which is okay. And if you have more than 39, it's not advisable to play with it because it's gonna uh, the eye of corruption, and the next worst thing, things from from beyond, I think it's called, is gonna annoy you as much as if it's gonna really be bad for your DPS. So you want to have always less than 39. If you have 39, that's okay. You can handle the eye of corruption because you just you can just move every single time out of it, so it's not a problem. This week's corruptions. As we can see on the mutter, are severe. Increases amount of critical strike you gain from all sources of by, by 12%. If you can get as much as possible severe corruption on your character, that is going to be absolutely 100% awesome. It's the most useful corruption that you can have. So this week, if you have enough Echoes of Nalotha, I would suggest that you buy like three or four or even five severe corruptions and put them on your gear. Everything else you have, you can cleanse. Because right now, I'm gonna cleanse Activated. my bracers. As soon as I open Mother. Because I don't need this corruption on my bracers. So I'm gonna pick up one severe and I'm gonna put it on let's see I'm gonna put it on I guess bracers or maybe the weapon I guess I could put it on a weapon I'm gonna put it on a weapon there we go so I, I have gained a critical strike rating now by 12% and that's not really the actual 12% but a little less than that I don't think it's like 4% or something like in total that you get. But either way, it's perfect. It's something you want to have. And I would advise that you put as much as possible preserve con contaminant severe on your gear because it's going to increase your critical strike and that automatically means it's going to increase your DPS as much as you can. I also have this which is 66 corruption of tentacle spawn. I I thought like this was a pretty worthy corruption to keep because it, it does a lot of damage and it's pretty pretty standard when it comes to DPSing down regular bosses on a single target or even multi-target it's quite useful. So I have these two corruptions right now. Like I said, I have D66 and the one on the weapon right now, 20 corruption with severe. And in total, I have 23 corruption, and that is more than enough. I can go more for that with that, but it's not worth it. So I play as safe as as, as much as possible, safe, as safe as I could. But that's pretty much about it. Uh, thank you for watching this vision run. Thank you for paying attention. I guess <laughs> if you were paying attention. And I'll check you out until the next stream. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.